two, one. Hello and welcome back, everybody. It is it has been a while. It's been a fat minute since we've been back. Uh, the last podcast series we did was the Book of Boba Fett, and now we are. It's what, what are you saying, Brady? It's been a minute. It's it's been a minute. Wait. I'm like actually was super time. excited to do this cast. Like I've been looking forward to it all day. Let's see. I'll actually, if I can, I'll put a a, a, a comparison picture towards when Brady last had facial hair to now because he looks a little a little more scraggly a little more manly a little more nomad a little more nomad if you guys catch my drift anyway not important what is important is today we are talking about dr strange in the multiverse of madness and one last little thing is i know a lot of people are upset that i wear a mask still i don't think they understand that i'm a faceless cosplayer so i don't really like care to show my face and the mask is comfortable and i've got a curious case of the ugly so um that's why i wear it but if i can get on my youtube channel to 2,000 subscribers, I'll, 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 I'll take the mask off. Face reveal. There you go. There Incentive. You have it. It's that easy, guys. Just get him 2,000 followers. It's not hard. It's yeah. on video. He'll do it. It's on video. Yeah, I'll do it. Um, anyway. And if he takes it out, I'll vouch for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I'll redeem the ticket. Anyway. Anyway. Today, <laughs> we are talking about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Spoiler discussion. If you haven't seen it, and it's really weird that people have been so loose with spoilers in this. But anyway, I am here joined by Brady Moose and the Lazy Pool. Uh, another little quick thing is that the channel name, I did do an announcement video for it, but the channel name has changed to TXTV. It's, I'm still TS Cosplay, buckets and stuff on TikTok. We're gonna, I'm actually going to be broadcasting Twitch streams a little bit more, so it'll be it's TXTV1 on Twitch. Um, and yeah, let's get into the multiverse of madness. Let's, as we always do, let's get a general consensus. Uh, uh, we'll go, we'll go. I haven't, I went and saw it with force, but I haven't heard what Brady has to say. Brady. Yeah. Let's see what Brady wants yeah. to say. Okay. I, I do want to say, I wasn't sure if I was watching a horror movie or a Marvel <laughs> movie. Like straight up. I like heart racing on the edge of my seat. Was like, what am I watching? What is Marvel doing to me? <laughs> loved it. Loved this movie. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, overall, loved it. But absolutely could not decide if I was in a horror film or a Marvel movie. Mm. That's that's a really great description, to be honest. Forrest, what about you? Um, like I told you on, on the drive back home after the movie, um, it, it was disturbing to me at some points. Like, I mentioned it when I was texting Taylor about it. Like, I don't know if I can sit through this again, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. It's just that, it was just that disturbing to me. Huh. Okay. But it was good. It was really good. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit. My general consensus is I'm oddly enough still undecided. Uh, and I'll explain why. And I've talked to several people. There are some people at work I talked to. Um, I'm still understanding. Like I, I, I was entertained. I was entertained the entire time. I know I didn't dislike it. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't. I don't know. Because I want to say I loved it, but I, eh, but I loved it, but, eh. but. Let's get into spoilers. And we, I, it's been a couple days, so I don't quite remember everything. If there's things that you guys want to address, we can hit those. Just chime in, and we'll hit those. So the first thing. Like out the gate, this movie is starts off with action. Okay, so before we go any further, actually, I do want to ask a question. Hmm. Does what what happens in one division have to do with the sto- part of the story of this? Yes, because I felt like there was stuff I was missing, and I haven't watched one division yet, so I feel like there because there was stuff I was missing, and I was like, I don't know where this came from. One division establish yeah. one division establishes her motivations for this because if things in one division. Okay didn't happen she wouldn't know about certain things like the dark hold runes casting spells or other certain things so okay. like like little spoilers little spoilers she didn't know about the whole thing of being the scarlet witch until wandavision she didn't know about okay. spell casting until wandavision because there's a certain character that's detrimental to that stuff um and as well too as 
certain things that happen with the boys. Because if WandaVision never okay. happened, then again, that what happens in WandaVision, what like she does in WandaVision sets her motivations for this. Because if those things never happened, she'd kind of just be grieving and really wouldn't care. Unless I'm okay. wrong for us, yeah. unless you disagree. <clears throat> Forrest? No, it was um it Wonder Vision only really sets up um her trying to get her kids back. That's it. It sets that up, but also I'm gonna spoil it for you. Because if you guys haven't seen it, whatever. Agatha Harkness is the reason that she knows about the Dark Hold is that she's doing the stuff at the end because the stuff at the end of WandaVision the reason she's in the dark hold and she's like reading the dark hold and casting all these spells and looking for her sons is because Agatha introduced her to that stuff. And okay. the reason why she's out at that little, that little, um, little cottage area or whatever, when we left off, she was at the end of, uh, WandaVision. She was actually in the dark hold, casting that spell, having her proxy body or whatever, doing her thing. So when, okay. she, when she goes, she was doing astral projection. I think when she was doing, when she went like that and it all went red, you would see, and it's like, okay, so it was that much time from when she was in WandaVision doing that stuff and it corrupted all that stuff. So you see in WandaVision, it's the last time you see Wanda Maximoff. And then you see the Scarlet witch in, cause you see that transformation that she's like, okay, well I'm a witch. I can do this. She finally figures out like how powerful she can be. Um, so Okay. Good. Yeah. Um anyway, so with that being thrown in there, um, so yeah, it does it does set up some stuff. Like again, if she if she would have never done the thing she didn't want a vision and she would have never had the boys, then she wouldn't have even cared to have the boys. She would have just wanted vision back and would have been happy with white vision, which that's a thing. Where the heck was he? Why didn't she, why why was there no exactly. why was there no mention of him? I'm sorry, but you feel left out. But this is a thing we got to talk about because it's one of the big plot points for me. We're gonna kind of jump all around, but basically, essentially, basically, essentially, um, Wanda gets the remains of Vision from this new organization, Sword, and she kind of brings him back together in a really funky way. But no. basically, <clears throat> hold on, let, let me finish my thing. Let me finish my thing. And if I'm wrong, you, you, you correct me. But from what okay. I remember is White Vision basically gets the memories of Old Vision. And then he just leaves. And then Wanda fights Agatha, defeats her, puts a curse on her or some sort of spell that makes her think that she's still in the 1930s. And then she leaves too. And then goes and mourns and tries to find her sons. That part's, yeah. Um, with the white vision, she didn't get his original body. The vision that we see in WandaVision, the purple and yellow and green one, that is her projection of him from her powers and the bit of the soul stone or mind stone that influenced her abilities. And then he gets the white vision, the memories, because the white vision was built by a sword. And just to be a, a murder machine, pretty much. So that's just, I guess, my question. This isn't a WandaVision recamp, recan, but Vision yeah. was able to leave Westview and things that weren't real in Westview, like everything was kind of reskinned in Westview. Like the boys weren't able to leave Westview because they weren't real. Evan Peters uh... was a real guy, but he was just someone else that she made look like Pietro. Vision was able to leave Westview because he, he, he leaves in, in a part of it. But anyway, 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 the only reason I bring anyway, that up, the only reason I, br- yeah, the only reason I bring that up is just because white vision has the memories of vision apparent essentially. So he would have been able to be like, Hey Wanda, what the heck are you doing? Um, but doc, they didn't reach out to him, whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, off to a little bit of a rocky start, but the where when we see her in the corrupted fields or whatever that, that was the biggest thing when well first of all let's doctor strange because this is a movie about him his hair piece in the whole beginning of this movie looked so fake like really? you, you to me at least you want to talk about like 
the before we started this for us was saying that Bra- a face Brady was making was looking like the the plastic toy soldier um Tim Allen in the Santa Claus. It 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 didn't look great. Like it just I don't know. I don't know. But you know, the America Chavez stuff where she's running through and he's trying to stop like I could I, I didn't know what was going on, but I was instantly invested. Oh, right. you're about that that strange. That strange is hair piece. Oh no, no, no. I'm talking about strange at the wedding. Okay. Um, but I'm trying to like capture three things at once because I'm trying to remember everything. But uh the America Chavez stuff, I think that first initial scream she did when that thing was like attacking her and she was like blasting the multiverse stuff, that got me. I was like, holy crap, like this is this is not gonna be a a a kind movie. It's gonna be brutal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what did you guys just as a whole? We'll just cover the whole. What did you guys think about them re- bringing back the story of? I can't even remember her name. What was his love interest name? Uh, oh, Christine. 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 Chris, yeah. Christine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I was telling Forrest in the theater. I completely forgot about her. Yeah, he did. <laughs> me too. And, and like, I have, a, it didn't sell for me really. Like, that whole part of it didn't sell for me pretty much the whole movie just because, like, from all the other movies, we have Doctor Strange in and no mention of Christine. Christine's mm-hmm. never an issue, never brought exactly. up. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, they're trying to, like, re bring that in. And I get it. I get the purpose of it, but it just didn't sell for me. If this had been, like, the third Doctor Strange movie, and we had her brought back in the second one, then maybe, maybe it could have worked a little bit better. But when between the first Doctor Strange coming out, what like 2017 ish, something like and that, and then we have Doctor Strange two only just barely coming out now, and he's been in so many other Marvel movies. It's him trying to reconnect with the love interest. It doesn't work out for right now anymore. Exactly, and 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 for me, maybe this is just my my theory is maybe he's like, okay, the events of the Infinity Wars are over. Everything's calmed down. I think I can whatever. But at the same time, like, he obviously knows things aren't going to work out between the two of them because she's getting married. You know, like, why care? And then he goes in, and I'm like, they better not do the trope where he tries to win her back at the wedding. And then he does it. And then he does it. He's like, you know, why couldn't it have worked out between us? I'm like, oh, my gosh, dude. That whole thing, like, I wasn't invested in their stuff at all. On all on, in all honesty, I was more invested in Doctor Strange's relationship with America. Yep. Like, I, I cared more about that than I did about the Christine stuff. Um, yeah, I agree. That whole Cthulhu one-eyed monster fight, that... <sighs> what did you guys think of that? Four I liked ahead. it. That's the first time I've seen Wu or not Wu Wong actually fight, because um, I haven't seen Ten Rings, so I don't know if he fights in there at all. But Wong is actually pretty badass. Mm. I like I love how he has pretty much the rope spear or rope kunai mm-hmm. thing going on with the magic, but the Cthulhu monster thing. I, it was okay <laughs> until the end of the fight. Yeah. <laughs> you, your reaction in the theater was priceless. Was priceless. Oh, my gosh. The, uh, when he, like, they... <laughs> Impale the eye and rip it out. And... <laughs> Ow. Like you, I can't you, do you that. You had a physical reaction. You... <laughs> Forrest straight up was just like, oh, <laughs> and he started rubbing his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> I was like, you don't like my eyes started water- <laughs> watering up now just thinking about it. Well, it came out like, you know, it, po- it popped out <laughs> and then all like the tendons and stuff came out with it. <laughs> and it just, oh my gosh. Yeah, that. Ugh. But it also then had the uh, the runes on it, which I didn't even put two and two together that Wanda sent it out. Either. You know, like I'm like the thing with the other strange and then the thing with with this, the current strange. But then uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, so I didn't write any notes down because I was in the theater um, and I, I've only seen it once. But you get Dr. Strange, like like the America girl trying to dip out and stuff like that. And what, what anyone else want to kind of give a rundown of what happened next? I I'm having a hard time remembering. 
Brady, you saw it most recently, uh, so why don't you take over? Don't put that on me. Um, so <laughs> I, I remember they kill the monster, they bring down, and then they start asking America who she is and, like, where she's from and all that stuff. And as soon as they ask her, little thief, little <laughs> thief steals his rings, and he instantly knows. He's like, she stole my rings. Or what, what are they called? The, what, they, sling they call ring. The sling yeah, ring. The slingies. She stole, she stole my slingies. And I'm like, oh, really? And then they, like, appear right in front of her and take it, from her, take it back <laughs> from her. And, and granted, she doesn't trust Doctor Strange now because she's the only one that can travel through the multiverse. And the last Doctor Strange tried to steal her powers. So completely understandable. Uh, but then they start getting the lowdown on everything of what's going on. And, and um, that's when he goes to the one person that supposedly can help. Mm-hmm. And that's where Wanda comes into play. And I'll admit, I had not seen WandaVision. And as soon as we went there, I had remembered that I knew I should have watched WandaVision. Because I myself try to stay very caught up on this stuff, so I'm in the loop. And now I remember why. Because I hate feeling out of the loop on this stuff. (laughs) Um, Because as soon as they had their talk, and Doctor Strange is talking about her, and then Wanda says her name, and and he stops. I'm like, yep. Yep. She didn't know yep. the name. Yep. Yep. And then he, and she goes, oh, you didn't tell me her name. And he goes, yeah, I didn't. And I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> God, yeah. God damn it. Now, I want to say this <laughs> before before we go on. Um, I was not sold on her acting yeah. um, for the first part of the movie. For like the first Wanda or Americans? Wanda. America okay. did great the whole time, in my opinion. I think America did great the whole time. Wanda, however, I was not sold hardly hmm. at all for like the first half hour, I wanna huh. say. Like I maybe not half hour, but like fifteen minutes of her FaceTime. I was not I just really wasn't sold, man. I just couldn't feel it. And maybe it's because I didn't watch WandaVision, so it didn't I didn't really get it, but like her acting wasn't there for me in the first part of it. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, I, 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 in the grand scheme, like if you watched WandaVision, it basically tells you like how she knows how to do what she's doing, which is casting spells Mm -hmm. and that she had her boys. Um, so it hit, it obviously like Forrest and his female, um, in the theater, when she like rolls over and they're not there, and we wake up like <laughs> Forrest's Forrest's female audibly in the, louder than it was like I'm depressed now. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was crying. I asked her <laughs> afterwards, and she was legit crying after that. Like it's so oh it's so it's so sad. But like if you watched it, like again like I don't want to say if you watch it like you're not like I'm an elitist, but like if you watched it, you would kind of get the that like why she's so monotone and why she's so different is because when she said you're not dealing with, you know, when he's like, we're not dealing with Wanda anymore. We're dealing with the Scarlet, Witch. it's a completely separate thing. It's like Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker, essentially. Right. Like right, it's, right. it's a, that thing. Um, but so I can, but I can, I completely understand. Uh, I, the second she was like, she says America's name. I was like, we got her. Like we, you know, we got See, her. My my dumb self, I was so convinced by the trailer that she was going to help Strange out during the whole movie. Mm-hmm. That I was like, when she said, why don't you bring America to me? I was like, how are they going to bring a whole country to her? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> for it. Oh, gosh. You would think that, damn you. I mean, I mean, I had my moments. But Taylor also had a moment. As soon as Wanda was on screen, he shouted out, Mummy Wanda. No, I did not. I He did. I, nope, nope. I refuse. There's no video. Brady, get out of there. I ref- <laughs> get out of there. Um, uh, but I did. I did have a moment. Uh, there was another moment too where, uh, a uh, little fast forwarding a little bit. You know where they're. You know, strange. I can't remember how they get to the multiverse thing, but basically, Wanda attacks the the sorcery sorceress. The you know Doctor Strange stronghold. Their place. I can't remember the name of the place. Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. Camera Taj. Camera Taj. Yeah. Yeah. The Taj Mahal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Doc, she attacks that, and that whole scene was just really. It was good. It was good. I I feel like, and it was so in Doctor Strange's character, to you know when Wong's like you know be delicate with her, you know, and he goes up and he just disrespects her right to his face, comes back down, nailed it. You know, like he knows he's like, there's nothing I can't, he can't say anything. Like he can't, he tried to sympathize with her. Like I understand, but at the same time, the, the thought that was going through my head the entire time, and I get that she couldn't cast the spell through their, their shield. Once she broke the shield down the entire time in the movie, she grabbed Thanos, lifted him up, brought a bunch of rocks up, Boom. Grab like she's done this before. Why didn't she just grab America? She wasn't up there though. She was deep inside. But she she got when she got in and she was standing there, they're like, Wanda, don't do this, don't do this. And she fights them, just grab America and leave. Like I get that they would have whipped her, but there's uh, the point I'm trying to make is there's plenty of times where she could have just force grabbed her. There were, there were yeah. plenty of times and people have people have 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 like I've gotten I've gotten into discussions with people about it and they're just like well this well that and I was like it's just a plot hole like just just it's just a plot hole but what I did right. like is when they put her in that little glass house she was just like she didn't try to like like she initially tried oh, to the mirror dimension yeah she just she goes through the reflections and you know that was creepy that was that when she came out, out the so out much the, the, out the the thing that was it a mirror like she yeah the the water reflections. And then why was there so much the... standing water in the basement? That's my question. Hold that's... up. So I want to say that's when it got creepy. Was when but what I did like is that like Wanda was still caught off guard by Doctor Strange. Like it mm-hmm. wasn't like this instant overpowerful enemy that could predict everything they were doing. She still didn't predict everything that was happening. So she was still surprised. She was still caught off guard. Yeah. She still took hits. And that's what I like. Because none of us, none of us three like OP people. Yep. It doesn't matter yep. if they're a villain. It doesn't matter if they're a hero. Us here at the Dead Kings podcast all agree we hate OP people. Like, we just mm-hmm. do. And so it was nice to see some weakness on both sides, both Doctor Strange and and all of the, the sorcerers, the Sorcerer Supreme himself, and then her weaknesses as well. But it was really cool to watch her just get more and more powerful. And as that battle went on is when I started to feel her acting a lot better, and it, it set for me. Because it started to get more creepier and more intense, and I started to feel more impacted by the story with her children and everything but when she comes out of the gong and her eyeball <laughs> comes out of the one small little reflection <laughs> i jumped and from there it was jump scares for days and we all know i i know when taylor got jump scared the most because we all did we all did no what? all right i never got jump scared in the entire movie i'll confirm tell me well we'll get there we'll get there we'll get there. well when she was climbing out of the gong, I turned to Taylor and left the theater and was like, she should be in Dead by Daylight now. Yeah! He's like, she, he's like, she should be in Dead by... Especially in that tunnel chase. Anyway. Anyway, kind of jumping ahead. Oh, that's but, where he jumped. No, that's not where I jumped. No, he didn't. Not, not externally. I jumped there. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But the thing that I really did like about this overall kind of, kind of just casting an overshadow about Wanda is that she wasn't in it for world domination. She wasn't killing people left right and center she wasn't killing anybody that was it wasn't necessary like she was just shooting her explosions and people are flying away and getting knocked out she wasn't she doesn't want to kill anybody if she doesn't have to mm-hmm. she was just like i just want to be with my boys like she can't be with vision even though white vision's out there somewhere um but she just wants her boys and there were plenty of times where i'm like okay maybe she'll be reasonable and it's like well isn't it enough for you to know that they're being loved by their mother? She's like, no, because I'm their mother. And I'm like, oh, Wanda. <laughs> and that's the hard part for me because we all know how Wanda is. I just like, is supposed to be this caring, great person, right? Well, and the- But then when, and when she was just like, no, I'm going to be their mother. I'm like, that means you have to kill you to take her place, <laughs> which makes you a bad person. Exactly. <laughs> your blood pressure. Well, exactly. And that, that was the big thing for me was I was just like, that's where you see the difference between Wanda and Scarlet Witch. Wanda would have been like, okay, I can accept this, you know, they're whatever. But you also look at the scales. She lost her parents. She lost her brother. She had to be on a team with the man who was responsible for the deaths of her, the death of her parents and the, 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 the life that they lived. 
And then she lost her love interest. And then she loses the boys that she creates. But then in a way, she gets her brother back, loses him again. Like, just everything stacked on. I just feel like, like at the end of WandaVision, it just really seemed... I don't know. It, it, it's it's crazy because, like, you see her walking away in that hoodie and everything, and she it's like, okay, that was the last time we saw Wanda Maximoff. You know, like... Mm-hmm. um. But anyway, it just, you just, just see, it's like, Wanda, we're, we're trying to work with you here, you know, we're trying to, you know, and it's like, we all know full well that she could kill any of them just like that, yeah. just yeah. like that, you know, and she didn't. I mean, she even says, this is me, this is me being reasonable. That was me being Several reasonable. Times. And then she was like, I'm not being reasonable anymore. Exactly. Um, now let's kind of move on to, I can't remember the events that bring it up, but the, uh. The whole thing where they're where America and Doctor Strange are flying through the different universes or the different multiverses. Um, again, if I'm missing stuff, I'm sorry. It's been a while. We're kind of talking the heavy spoiler points and stuff like that. But they go through a bunch of different dimensions, and obviously, we see Spider Man 2099's universe and Spider Man Noir's universe. Uh, we see I see Spider Ham's universe. There was a really cartoony one, but. Maybe, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's, I don't know, maybe it is. Um, but, you know, we see a bunch of different universes and they land on this one where it's kind of weird, but at the same time, you're like, oh, we have no, no, no issue blending in, obviously. And it's one where, like, they've made Doctor Strange, like, a god, essentially. You know, they're not a god, but, like, a hero. A hero. A very yeah. big, a big hero. And he's got a statue mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. And again, I'm going to say it again. When that dude came out, the black dude with the dreads, I forgot who he was too. Because how many movies yeah. have come out since the first Doctor Strange movie? And I want to say at least like 10. Like, yeah. Uh, like, I forgot yeah. who he was until the boots. And he was even like, well, he tried to kill me in my universe or in, you know, in my universe. And I was like, a lot of people have tried to kill you from your first movie till now, Doctor Strange. I don't can't keep a count on how many there are. <laughs> like um but anyway so you know they go to th- that universe and they have this where the, the pizza balls what do you think of those brady <laughs> what do you think of those and the walking on red anyway <laughs> did you notice though in that universe all the buildings the environment was all colorful but everyone was wearing black and white mm-hmm. yeah it was. Oh, I, didn't that. I mean, it's kind of like how things are going now, <laughs> like in the real world. Like, look at what we're all wearing right now. No. <laughs> Any, anyway, um, they go to the they go to the sanctum, and you know he's like brother, you know, and I'm like, this is all a cruel ploy. That this is this dude doesn't like Doctor Strange either. Like, it's I didn't believe any of this for a second. I knew it was some sort of setup. And he's like, I'm just doing what you would have done, Steven. And it's like, okay, he's not wrong. Like when he drugged him and locked him up, I'm like, okay, he's not wrong. But I I will I mean, say he kidnapped I kidnapped Thor and Loki as well. I will say I didn't see that coming. But when it did happen, I'm like, okay, like I knew something was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Either he was working with Wanda or Wanda was, you know, uh possessing him or something like that. Um, I honestly didn't have any expectations or anything on that one. I was just kind of going with the flow. Just going point. with it. Yeah. Um, but let's. It, look. I will I say like when he called him Morgan. brother, when he called him brother, I didn't feel it. Yeah. When it was like brother, I was I, like, no, nah, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. Didn't didn't feel that. Um, and around this whole time too, what I was thinking in the back of my head was back to what the ancient one said in Endgame, where she's like, Stephen Strange was the be- is the best of us. Was meant to be the best of us. So all these people like Steven, you know, you're the one that we're worried about. You're the one that we're worried about. I'm like, he's the best of, he's the best of any sorcerer. He's, he's gonna, he's gonna work it out somehow. Um, and I'm like, stop slandering the homie Steven strange. And so let's get to, or again, we're jumping again. Cause there's more stuff with Christine and you know, I don't, He's trying to hit her. He's like, why can't it work out with us in this universe? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then they explain the thing of uh, what's the the incursions. Oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, then nothing would work out because they they should have just told Wanda, 
hey, if you have your stay with the boys or you bring the boys to you or you dream walk for too long, like it's never going to work. They didn't say that. They're just like, mm-hmm. you, you can't do it, Wanda. But anyway, let's get to the Illuminati. Oh, my God. Brady, go ahead. Go, go ahead. On, Brady. Go ahead. Dude, this part was so amazing for me, right? Like, so cool because we got so much all at once. And this was a question I wanted to shoot to you guys because of what happens with the Illuminati. But I don't know. Is Captain Carter, is that what we're calling her? Like, mm-hmm. okay. Captain Carter. Captain Carter was super dope. I know in the theater I heard a lot of what's and what's. And for those that haven't, haven't, like, I've seen it just enough in glimpses and stuff like that and on little pages about it and stuff. I knew who it was and I knew what it was. Other people are like, what? Who is that? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and and I, I had to point it out because um, I went with some friends uh, up here and they they didn't recognize it. I'm like, that's Captain Carter, like from mm-hmm. Captain America. And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, but I loved it. And then we see <laughs> um, what's his name as uh, uh, Mr. Stretch, Fantastic Four. John Krasinski is Mr. Fantastic. Oh man, Jimbo! Both, <laughs> both, both uh, uh, Kylie and um, my buddy just immediately start laughing because they just know him from The Office. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What?" I I still have to this day have not like really watched The Office. So to me, I was like, "What's so funny?" He's in Thirteen Hours. Like, exactly. Right. That's what I'm like. That's <laughs> like, where I'm starting to go too. Yeah, that's how I know him. So I'm like, "Oh, cool," you know. But everyone else in the theater, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yes, I mean, cool," <laughs> you know. And then Professor X, like just seeing it all and it all tying together, I was like, Marvel, you really can't screw this up, you sly dog. Like <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was well done and I was super happy with it. What I, I'll go on more about my question after you guys say your piece. Um, Dude, me and Taylor geeked out as soon as Professor X starts rolling up. You hear the 90s X-Men theme. We're both like, oh my God. I was like, no shot, dude. No shot. I... Here's what I'll say is I half expected to see either Beast or Wolverine with him or Scott, Mm -hmm. but I'm okay that like we didn't see them. Um, But seeing, you know, like, so it was uh, Monica Rambo, uh, Captain Marvel, Black Bolt, which again, people say you have to see Inhumans. I never, I don't care about Captain Marvel and I didn't watch Inhumans. So those two didn't get me. Um, but definitely Mr. Fantastic, because like, I don't care who you are, where you, where you, like, you know, if you're our age and you came up with the Fantastic Four movies with Jessica Alba, you loved them. You can't say you didn't like them. You, you can't. The thing and everything. Yeah. yeah you, you, you just can't lie. And I'm not going to believe it if you tell me that you're not, you know, so everyone's got to be hyped about Fantastic Four. We're not going to talk exactly. about the reboot of that, but. Um, and then we get, uh, you know, Captain Carter and she is from the what if series. Yep. Um, and that, I watched that a little bit before, um, seeing the movie. And obviously when that came out, everyone was posting about her and cosplaying her and all that good stuff. Um, so that, that I was like, okay, cool. You know, I know that they brought back, um, the, the, the lady who played her in, um, in Captain America. Loki was hoping they'd bring in Daisy Ridley, but, but hear me out. I'm glad that they didn't because I wouldn't, didn't want to see Daisy Ridley die on screen. That's my question. So that was my question. When they all started getting eliminated, dead, exploded, <laughs> yeah. killed off, obliterated. I was, I thought to myself, is this Marvel telling us that don't expect anything out of these? Like don't expect any more than what we just gave you. It's um, a little bit of a, a tease, and um, that's it. My, my opinion is probably with Captain Carter, uh, okay. just because from what I understand, Captain Carter was a one-and-done thing in okay. one universe. In other, Or maybe not, because in, in one of those, in the, in the What If series, there's a universe where Captain, or where um, Steve Rogers, like, becomes president of the United States. You know, but, oh. but who knows? Anyway. So it, it it makes me wonder because they all teleported in. Mm-hmm. There's probably some from that universe, but I can almost guarantee, obviously when Mr. Fantastic came in, he was from a different universe. He, he teleported. 
uh, you know, Professor X, they have, I'm sure they have teleportation technology, but my feelings, I, my feelings is that obviously it's confirmed. We're getting the fantastic four. It's already confirmed that we're getting the fantastic four. The theory, I feel the same way. The, the theory out there is that, because I guess in one of the movies, there's the Baxter building where Reed Richards worked and the Fantastic Four operated out of. During the events of the Infinity War, apparently they were up in space getting their powers mm. and all that stuff. That's why they didn't show up. They were up getting their stuff, and then they're going to come when they come back down and they start up. That's what happens anyway. But. I'm hoping that we get some X-Men stuff with Patrick Stewart. And, Stewart. And uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen, who played uh, Wanda Max, who played Scarlet Witch, obviously the daughter of Magneto, said that she would like to have Ian McKellen's Magneto as her dad. And if not, then Michael Fassbender. But... I don't know. I just, I don't think that they're like saying, oh, don't, don't, don't worry about it. You know, it's, it's, it's a one and done thing. Obviously I don't believe Captain Marvel's dead. I think she's just knocked out because Captain Marvel has, she got her freaking soul sucked by Rogue and survived. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. That was just my thought. I saw all of them just getting eliminated. And I'm like, this is them saying, look, here's some fan service dead. That's it. That's all you get. No more asking, no more touchy. And like, but I didn't know that Fantastic Four had been confirmed yet. So that makes sense on that. And uh, we'll guess we'll just have to wait and see. What do you think, Forrest? Yeah. What do you think about that, about the uh, whole Illuminati thing and everything? Um, well, I told you, I think maybe a month before um, the actual movie came out, that I heard that Illuminati was going to show up. Mm. And I know all who generally is on the Illuminati. Yeah, I was yelling expecting... in the theater, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But um one rumor I heard was they were gonna have Tony Stark reappear, but not yeah. Robert Downey Jr. It was gonna be Tom Cruise as the most powerful Iron Man in all the universes. But I'm happy they didn't do that. And instead we got to see um Captain Marvel and Captain Carter and Black Bolt looked amazing to me, to be perfectly honest. I'm, even though I don't know much about him, I know that he's a ridiculously power powerful inhuman. Yeah, but and Black watching Bolt. them all. Sorry. What? Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying Black Bolt did look good. Yeah, watching them all die, it, it really hurt me. Watching Black Bolt scream his brains into obliteration. My reaction exactly. Watching my boy Mister Fantastic get ripped apart, and then his head just go. Boom. It hurt. It hurt it a lot because after Spider Man, my favorite is Mister Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um. After Captain Carter died, I was like, okay, okay. okay. Uh, Because I thought it was a lot more brutal at first, because I thought Scarlet Witch threw the shield all the way through and cut her in half, but Taylor says that she just threw it in, stuck, and then pulled it out and threw it into a different wall. Like, back to the column that it came from. Um, Yeah, yeah, she... Hmm. Because there was only blood... There was only blood... There was only blood on one side of the shield. Oh. Um, Okay, makes sense. It, well, it, yeah, it, it, the, the most haunting thing about it to me was when Reed Richards died. You can still hear him screaming a while after she exploded his head. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you, I don't know if you noticed it, but you can, he's, you can hear him screaming for at least, at least three seconds more after he, you know, and so, uh, and then Black Bolt, oh, that was just pff, that, oh gosh. And then Professor X. I think I, that was such that was such a cool thing that they did where she was like in a bomb bunker, like a, a mm-hmm. war, like a thing where he's like, yeah, and you could see that it was like the actual Wanda in there, um, and he's like, yeah, I can help you, and he's like, oh crap, she's near, and just, you know, like that. Oh, and then he 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 dies on the thing, and I was like, oh, I don't. This is the third time we have seen Professor X freaking Patrick Stewart's Professor X die. We saw. Uh, Jean Grey kill him. We saw fake Wolverine kill him, and now Wanda Maximoff killed him. I'm like, I'm so sick of seeing Professor X die. Like, oh my gosh, dude! It's and each death has just been mid. Like it's been mid. Yeah. Like, like he turned into a puff of poop, and then he freaking, you know, fake <laughs> Wolverine. 
And then fake Wolverine just puts his claws in his chest and now Wanda just snaps his neck inside his own mind. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I was like, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Like, ugh. anyway, anyway, I, I'm just hoping that we get some more stuff there. Like, maybe John Krasinski was just a cameo appearance. Um, and won't be the official Reed Richards, but if he is, I won't be mad. Um, I won't either. Uh, but moving on to that that tunnel chase. No. So no. when Wanda shows up, and th- that was, a, again, another thing that was pissing me off is after Wanda kills Professor X, she's still slow limping to... Well, first of all, first of all, sorry, sorry, what we glanced over, Wanda... Dream walks and possesses other Wanda's body. Right. Like, yes. Yes. That the possession scene was kind of. I don't. I felt when she was like tearing up and she was with her boys again. Like again, you have to see Wanda Vision to have the impact. If you don't, if you don't didn't have it, but it's like. So I have a sister who has two boys. Well, I have two sisters who have two boys, but I have a sister who just has two boys, and I saw my sister there, and I know that might be kind of stupid. But it's like I could completely see my sister, if nothing else, cosplaying Wanda Maxwell. But I'm just like I kind of saw my nephews there. I was like, "Damn it, dude!" You know, like it, it got yeah. it, it got kind of if you got nephews or whatever, you, you, you feel it. You feel it's like what would you know my my sister do if she couldn't get to her boys? You know, um, yeah. and you start to kind of feel for Wanda there. But then she goes and she dream walks and stuff like that, and she's going after you know she obviously she kills the the Illuminati. And she just is slow limping towards her. And she just allows that stupid lady. Like, she's like, these are ballistic. These are ballistic. Uh, uh, Christine, these are ballistic walls. You can't penetrate them. Try to break it with a fire extinguisher. Like, I'm like, ma'am, you just hyped up how strong these walls are. You're not extinguishing it. And the entire time while she's trying to do that, she could, Wanda could have just grabbed her and said, bye. Yeah. And then, and then walked up. And, you know, it was like, okay, America, you broke the glass. Come here. But, yep. but, um, the, the other thing that got me was that, uh, you know, that whole tunnel, that whole tunnel scene, Wanda could have just, cause again, she, she killed Mr. Fantastic by grabbing him the entire time. She could have just grabbed America said, come here, we're leaving. But. I had a coworker who was talking to me about it and he was saying, well, Wanda was still fighting with other Wanda in her brain. So it wasn't, she wasn't able to just do that. And I'm like, I don't buy that just because she does it literally 20 seconds later when they're about to grab the book. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, yeah. She, like, I'm like, I, I, that's just a plot hole there. It's like, we all know Wanda can do that. She should have just done it anyway. Yeah, and maybe uh, the way I look at least the tunnel part is that, oh, I have these guys cornered. This is too easy. I don't need to do that. I'm going to, like, put the fear of everything I have into them before I take them. And that's what I got from the tunnel part of it, but the rest of it, I get I get what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, at the tunnel part, that's where increasingly I kept saying, I don't like that throughout the whole rest <laughs> of the movie. Did she creep me out after that? Like, the red eyes and the hair and the blood on the face and then the, the silence, because they're like, where'd she go? Where did she come from? Is my question. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the, the thing. anxiety by the water drops just slowing down as they're staring into the void. Well, and that's why I wasn't scared, because I'm like, I smell a jump scare. Like, you could just smell it. But anyway, we're kind of getting pressed for time, so we're going we're gonna to back up a little bit. So the way Wanda was able to, what happened was, I can't even remember the character's name, but while Wanda had Wong captured... Um, a, another sorcerer comes in and says, I, apparently this person had a bigger role in the comics. I didn't know this. I still don't know what it is. That's just what one of my coworkers told me. But she comes up, destroys the Darkhold. Wanda's like, you know what? We're gonna, I'm gonna kill these other people if you don't tell me where the Darkhold is. And he takes her up to this castle and that's where I got jump scared. That big monster that popped out. Oh. oh, dude, you know what those reminded me of? I know it's a different universe, but uh, the rage... Um, dudes in DC, um, the Red Ring, 
uh, guy that you can play. Oh, um, Atrocitus. 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 That's who that reminded me. I was like, where did Atrocitus come from? I, I can see it. it. I can see it. Well, it was, was kind of like, like, where like, was he? So it was chill inducing when they bowed to Wanda. And then it's like, she's like, it's not, you know, it's a shrine. I was like, holy crap, dude. So that's, I don't know. Like, it's, I, now, spoilers, obviously, this is what we're talking about. If Wanda is dead, then there apparently she there's so much stuff that they should have slash could have done with her. Apparently, from what I hear from other fans of, you know, the comics and stuff, I am not sure. But I, if she is dead, I'm not happy with how she went out. I'm not either. I don't fully believe she's dead. And they always say you don't. They always say you don't see. You didn't see a body. Anyway, so uh, Wanda. Gets America, goes back to the place, and is extracting her bullshit. He goes and he fights Scary Strange. Great way to put it. Scary Strange. Don't like that. Don't like that. Scary Strange. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to kind of summarize this again because we're pressed for time. But Scary Strange is scary and literally has the dark hold attached to him. Yep, just <laughs> at, hanging off his belt. At all times. We're not going to talk about the third eye. Well, we, we are, and the reason, so it worked on him, it worked on him. To me, it looked funky, not even just like, like, I guess that's what he looks like in the comics. In some comics, a yeah. After a yeah. while, I didn't know this, but the only reason I say it doesn't look right on our Doctor Strange is because the effect just looks terrible. Like, it looks like I a Snapchat filter. Yeah, and, uh. and that's the punishment, I'm assuming. Like, I won't go too deep into this, but using personally, the dark hold, yeah. I didn't like it. Even if it is comic accurate, I'm sorry. I just, I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. So I'm glad he can close it and make it look like it's not there. And that's that's the thing that threw us through a loop is in the trailer. They make it seem like that's the bad guy. Yeah. Like, and that's, but he lasted all of five minutes and then got impaled on the fence outside. <laughs> like, and then What's the, the musical note thing was cool, though. Dude, I, that was the sickest fight I've ever seen, in my opinion. I wasn't a fan of it. Really? I the, thought it was the, so cool. The, the only reason opera it was, music versus the, the good opera music. The only reason is because they didn't play a full ass song. That's why it would <laughs> it would keep it kept <laughs> stopping at different notes. I'm like, play the song. Just let it play. Um It was so creative though. Yeah. Yeah, I I I I didn't I I just I don't know. I get it, but I. Ugh. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So they go back and they have the last standoff with Wanda. Doctor Strange is stuck in his universe and he can't get back to America. So he possesses his dead body, and then has Christine sitting there saying, "You're gonna have to fight him off if they come for me for trespassing." And he, she says, "Fight who off?" The souls of the damned possesses the dead body. And I'm going to say right now, this is the lowest point of the movie for me. At least the only reason the makeup looked awful. Yeah. When you could tell that they mixed it with CGI, it looked good. But when you first see him and he turns around, he's like configuring his body on the mountaintop. You, I can clearly see where the latex is. The prosthetic mm -hmm. is. And then where his eyes are like, it just, for being a movie, it's in the MCU. When they have prosthetics like available to them, that are even like when you had skinny Tony Stark in Endgame, and he just looked really sunken in and sick. They could have done so much better. I get that. Like I, I, I a for effort for the practical effects, but it just looked really, really bad to me. Yeah. In in that one in that one moment. Um, yeah, I couldn't so, not see the zombie from Hocus Pocus. Be Billy, yeah. dude, same thing. <laughs> I think we're all there. Like straight up, I just kept seeing Billy. I'm like, when did he get here? Well, and that's that's what I said to Forrest <laughs> on the drive home. Is when the Doctor Strange eye pops out. I kept seeing the book from Hocus Pocus. <laughs> like, uh, but anyway, so he he overcomes the souls of the damned, and I like how. Christine was able to use something to fight him off and she knew what was what because she was with Steven and she mm -hmm. would, she would have occurred that knowledge from him. Um, so I did, I did when she was blasting him away and fought him off. And then when he overcame them, 
and used him as his new freaking cape. I was like, that it looks so, so sick when he flew and he had the, the bat wings. He was a bat and he freaking a bat. and he went off and he fought Wanda like that fight was sick. And I like how. I like, I don't know the the end the end fight. I don't know. Like I think when Steve when Captain uh, uh I almost said Captain Marvel when Doctor Strange is fighting. It's okay, but the the souls are doing almost all the work. Yeah. When America's fighting her, that stuff was in, that stuff was badass. Mm-hmm. She was punching her into the multiverse, dude. Like I was like, that's that's so freaking sick. Um, but, and I know I'm kind of steamrolling, but we were pressed for time. I'm sorry about that. But just that last little bit where America's like, I can't defeat you, but you can defeat you essentially. Mm -hmm. And she puts her into the universe, that same universe. And the the kids see her and she's a witch and they just scream. It's a blood curdling scream. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, it's a witch, you know? And then she comes down, uh, other Wanda comes down and you can tell in my mind, when uh, the other Wanda came down, like obviously they show that she has the powers too. Mm-hmm. Which I wonder if it was a side effect from being taken over. Either or, if it wasn't, if it wasn't a side effect, it would make sense why she didn't use her powers. Because like possession, from everything I know that I not that I know, but what I've seen in movies and stuff like that, that shit drains you. Like you're tired, you're mm-hmm. exhausted. She had bruises and stuff on her. Like she was feeling the effects of the fight that she was having with the Illuminati and everybody. Um, right. so, so it made sense that she resolved it the way that she resolved it. But when they were throwing the stuff at her, she's like, stop it. You know, uh, they were, and they were like, don't hurt us. Don't hurt us. I was like, Oh, can't do this. Like, <laughs> Oh, that, that, that part just hit so hard. Like it hit so hard. What did you guys think about that from the fight with Dr. Strange till that part? Ready? Honestly, <sighs> I, I liked every pretty much everything. Um, I liked the way that it all ended with using the kids. Like they literally used the whole mindset of like you're being you're doing the wrong choice because you're hurting the kids by doing what you want to do. Like you think you're gonna help yourself by getting the kids, but what are you doing to the kids? Mm-hmm. And that was kind of a good thing for me, like to see it end that way as opposed to just in a, some kind of crazy fight. Like they literally used, look at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. to make her realize what she was doing wrong as opposed to just fighting her and imprisoning her for a later movie or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was a really good way to end it. What I thought I was going to end um, was during the fight with America because she opens a dimension to hell. The, you see that. And I thought all the souls of the damn were going to pull her into hell. It was just going to end there and America was going to have complete control of her powers and just fix everything, get everyone to the right place, all that stuff. And post credits was her making a deal with, or Scarlet Witch making a deal with Mephisto, to get back to Earth to take revenge on Strange and all that fun stuff. Forrest, everyone's wanting Mephisto. I don't think he's coming. I know. <laughs> Wishful thinking. I do. I like. I said. I do like how it ended. Um, I don't think she's dead at yeah. all. Um, and for, confirmed Doctor for Strange me, is the new Batman <laughs> and see for me like I've never been like I'm not saying I like her acting in all the other movies was great but I'm like not set like I could care less whether she comes back or not I mean she comes back cool there's another story but if she doesn't then I'm not gonna cry the only yeah. reason I care so much is just because like she did so much like she she never had like a happy life she never got, and maybe that's the story of Scarlet Witch is she's just doomed to be have a tragic life. But it was really sad because after everything she went through from Civil War, from, uh, from like, go back. Sorry, I didn't mean to say Civil War. I meant to say um, Age of Ultron. But in Civil War, I think it's at the end where they have her in just that locked up in that suit and stuff. Like, she never really escaped that, like, that, that feeling. She never really got to escape that. It's like, it would have been nice to have her have a happy ending. And this would have been the mm-hmm. movie to do it. For her to be like, okay. Oh, I, there's something else I did notice, by the way. I forgot. I'll let, we'll finish off, and then I'll just make this last point. We'll say it now, Brady. You got us all so curious. Oh, shut up. Those uh, those robots that were at the Illuminati, they were saying uh, Ultron. Ultron commands you. Ultron commands you. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of crazy. You got to watch What If. Well, yeah, what I was telling Taylor about that, I think that's one of the universe where Ultron actually worked. 
Yeah, uh, where he's not okay. at. Oh, yeah, man. Um, Makes sense. But, anyway, final ratings. Forrest, what are you going to give? What are you going to give, Forrest? I'm going to give it 8 out of 10, but that's because I don't know if I could sit through it more than <laughs> maybe like three times. Mm. Brady, what about you? Uh, honestly, I really enjoyed this film, so I'm going to go with a 9. A 9? Okay. 9 out of 10. Um... For me, just like I'll change it if they come back and they give us the X Men with Patrick Stewart and they give us a you know Mister F- John Krasinski, Mister Fantastic. I'll change my rating, but I'm gonna give it a seven point five. It was above average. I enjoyed it, but it there's things that like I don't know. It left a lot of questions, and especially with those end credit scenes. Oh. That's another reason why I'm giving it a 7.5. I forgot about that. And I made a comment after the movie. And I'm going to say this now. I feel like every actor out there who hasn't been involved or just wants to be as famous as possible is cashing in on being a Marvel superhero. Everyone be trying to be a Marvel superhero or a superhero. I mean, Robert Pattinson coming out of nowhere is Batman. Great Batman. Um, Well, Charlie, Charlie Theron already was a superhero. Charlie Theron coming back as another superhero. In Hancock. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> but coming in as a, as a, and then Black Adam, it, it, the rock being Black Adam, like everyone is just trying to cash in. Like just all these people cashing in is, is characters. And hey, I don't blame them. It's, they're great, perfect roles for people. But like, I was not expecting Charlie Theron and I'm a little upset. And normally I'll try, like, right after the movie, I'll try to look up who was in the after credit scenes if they're new people. I'm like, who is this? Who are they? You know, but I didn't do it with Charlie. There's something about Charlie Theron. I just, I'm not, I'm like, no, I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to wait. Yeah, I, I, and I'm not, I'm not huge. Again, I'm not huge. I, I'm not a huge sorcerer person. I'm not a huge magic person. Like, yes, I like Star Wars, but that's, that's different. I don't. That's space magic. That's space magic. Completely different. Things, uh, again, for time. But I like more grounded stuff. I liked Iron Man. I liked Captain America. I liked Falcon the Winter Soldier. I liked Hawkeye. Like, I I don't know. Like, I, like when they showed, you know, that she cut the portal to Forrest was saying that it was the dark multiverse, I didn't get hyped. Like, I just didn't care. You know, I'm like, more multiverse stuff. Who else is going to cameo? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, like, that's that, what I'm talking about. That's yeah, where I'm like, like we're just gonna cash in. But anyway, that that that, and then the uh, other end credit scene is uh, from what I saw. It was this. It was what the spoilers that I had was that it just the second end credit scene is that pizza ball guy punching himself in the face. He finally stops punching himself and says, "It's over," and then it ends. Yep, it wasn't worth it, and but it's happened to me twice now with end credit scenes where I sit through the entire credits. And I get a crap end credit scene. Batman with first question one? mark. Hated it. Hated no. it. And then this one where it's like, it's over. I'm like, seriously? I sat there to be told <laughs> in a clever way that it's over? Thank you. Well, and it was kind of like in um, Spider-Man Homecoming where Captain America says, so sometimes you wait for something and there's just no end. You know, there's no payoff. Whatever. Brady. <laughs> you know, like, and that, that's where I'm just like, they just maybe they just don't know what to do. But anyway. That will do it for this episode. The next episode we're going to be talking about is going to be before Kenobi, but we're going to be talking about the Batman and just Batman in general in one thing. So we'll see you all there. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.